my name is David Medre. Um, I'm going to talk to you today how we built uh, development departments for our developers uh, at the Mesa. Um, so, um, by night I'm a contributor to the LXE project and by day I work at the Mesa. Uh, Emesa runs a platform for auctioning uh, in the Netherlands called Captain Bellingen, and more recently we have been expanding to Belgium and France as well. Um, so, when did we choose LXT? Uh, first of all, we run everything on uh, bare metal, so we need to have an hypervisor in order to do. Uh, to be able to run more than one uh, operating system uh, on the server. Um, we are already running LXD as our well main hypervisor for our production environments. And I want also to make a question to all of you. Who is using LXD at the moment? And who is using LXD on their production environment at the moment? OK, there's a few. All right. Um, so we're already doing it for quite some time, for at least two years. And we are quite, uh, quite happy with it, so we want to keep it uh, to also use it in the rest of, uh, of our environment. Uh, most of the services that support our main application, they were already running on LXD. Um, they were building, uh, being built uh, with a Puppet, um, so that means that we have an easy way to do the, all the reproducibility and in order to build up the application part that we need. Um, so for us, it was just a natural choice to go with, uh, with LXD. Um, we are currently in the phase of migrating some of the bare metal applications into uh, containers and we want also at the same time to revamp our whole development test uh, acceptation and production environment. Uh, we had some issues with our whole development environment. Uh, we had a single server used by 30 developers. Uh, which is, uh, yeah, it made me cry sometimes. Uh, we didn't have much flexibility uh, if we wanted to install uh, software or if we wanted to upgrade something or if the uh, developer would come to us, hey, I would like to test this new uh, MongoDB feature, blah, blah, blah. Or we want to, uh, to upgrade our PHP version because it's going to be more performant. Uh, yeah, that's not going to happen as easy as we want because we can upgrade our current development environments and uh, we don't, we don't really want to have to, to go through that trouble. Um, we have, so we, having a shared environment also means that uh, if we want to run an application for developers so that he wants to do these things, we need to map the applications to the developer, which means that uh, if you want to have a memcache, for example, uh, we would have to say, oh, we want a memcache, okay, this is your port, and then we need to make a mapping, okay, so this memcache belongs to this developer. Um, yeah, that, that brings a little bit of trouble for us as well. Uh, one, other, one other funny thing is that we had to do the when we start every night so that we just pick up all the, the memory and uh, all the resources that, all, that were located to that, so to do the events. So, yeah, it's not a uh, very fun stuff. Um, on our testing environments, uh, we, had, uh, the, the, we had fixed resources for our testers, so we had to build up a couple of virtual machines and some bare metal servers for them in order to test, so they would just uh, redeploy the, 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 the application itself. Um, so we had to be a bit careful with these environments, meaning that uh, yeah, we, we would not touch them too much as well. Uh, if one of them was down, it was a bit of a problem, even though it was a testing environment. Uh, we had no proper way of cleaning up the environment on deploys, uh, reinstalled the packages, uh, verified if our build system was, uh, was working fine. Um, and testers actually had to use a scheduling system to reserve resources uh, because they were limited. So uh, some testers wanted to use a server that was more powerful for some stuff. And uh, sometimes they would uh, fight with each other saying, oh, no, I need it, oh, no, I need it. So we want to end up with all of this. Um, so uh, enough talking about problems. And now I'm going to go a bit more into how uh, we solve these issues. Uh, so how did we start it? Uh, we started by working on our puppet recipes and we started by building up a container uh, which contains uh, the application itself and all of the, the supporting applications for our main application. So 
we have our websites, and our website requires a memcache, requires RabbitMQ, requires all of those daemons working, and uh, we started to, 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 to do the heavy lifting on having uh, all of those daemons running inside of a single container. Um, that's one of the good things about the Linux containers, is that they are system containers, so you are running uh, whole OS inside of a, of a really tiny um, file system and a really tiny uh, overhead, compared to a virtual machine, for example. Um, so that, that makes us, uh, that, that, that was really good for us, because, yeah, uh, we were already using for things in production, and we just had to basically adapt what we had in production to run everything inside of a, of a single container. Um, at the same time, uh, we also built our, uh, our base image. Um, our base image had already uh, all the software installed, so uh, it already had the, the necessary the software that it needed to run, and uh, every time we booted that image, or every time we started that image, we would just run our puppet apply, which would apply all the configuration stuff that we required, uh, all of the things around it, and we would have a working application on, uh, in about yeah, two minutes or something, just to start up the, 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 the container, run all the configuration stuff, and uh, the image would be built and ready to be used. Uh, this was also the phase where we started the automation. So we uh, built up, our, uh, we built up uh, the container automatically with a bash script. Uh, what the bash script does is pretty simple: just launches the container based on the image that we have previously built and that we have previously done. Uh, pulls the, our puppet repository to inside of that uh, container image applies all the settings that we need to, to apply, uh, cleans up all the unnecessary files like uh, log files, key files, uh, history files that are not really required inside of, uh, inside of the container. Uh, after that, it taps the container uh, IP address to uh, DNS so that we can just uh, type the container name and we can connect. Um, so at this, phase, at this phase, we already had a way to uh, boot up a container connect to it and run the application. So uh, this, this phase we were also talking with the developers to try it out, to figure out uh, what, what kind of things uh, were wrong with the container. Um, but we run into another problem. And uh, that problem is the fact that LXD currently, it's being developed, uh, currently it only runs locally. Uh, so that means that if you have a bunch of LXD servers, uh, you can remote connect to connect to them but uh, they don't have a way to uh, connect with each other in the sense that uh, they don't know, like, uh, yeah, this, this, the, you are running X containers, I'm running X containers, and um, they are not basically aware of each other. So we decided to, to, to do our own orchestration tool. Uh, it's a very basic orchestration tool uh, in order to treat the LXD servers uh, as a cluster. Uh, we wrote our own orchestration script based on uh, PyLXE. We call it the Emesa Container Orchestration Orchestrator, or ECHO. And uh, what it basically does is, uh, yeah, you, you put the, all the LXD servers that you have on your configuration file, and then it will just put all of those values in the dictionary, and uh, the key uh, will be the name of the server, and the value will be the the, co the connector objects that you can use to connect to LAC. Um, and how we are doing it right now, we just via the CLI, we say launch container, and if you figure out which of the LXD servers has the least amount of containers running, uh, it will just uh, launch the container there. Uh, it will retrieve any information related to the container, like uh, IP address, name, um, any kind of, what kind of storage is it attached to it, all those kind of things. And you can easily add as well custom facts to the container. Uh, so that means that when you deploy an application, you want to know who deployed that application, uh, or that container in this case. Uh, you want to know as well when was the container um, launched. And uh, we also have added things like, oh, someone deployed the master branch in here, or whatever branch, and uh, some other stuff that you can add if you want. Um, So, at 
this point, we already have a way to uh, launch everything, build up the container, and uh, run the application inside of a single container. But we needed to have a way for our developers to uh, launch it and without <coughs> providing them any uh, root access or to provide them any, any sort of access to our uh, infrastructure. Uh, so we decided to use Jenkins for that. Uh, Jenkins is kind, kind of works like a front end for our shell scripts, actually. Um, so uh, when you click on the on the on the job for to launch a container, it already prefills uh, a lot of uh, data. Um, so it prefills your uh, uh, developer username, your public key that you want to use, uh, the host name prefix, so that uh, you can give your uh, your container uh, a name and then you can connect to it uh, via DNS. It will add a few records, uh, something like yeah, container.development.emesa.whatever. Um, it will also allow you to uh, select a specific branch of your application that you want to pull, so in case the developer wants to test their branch or a tester needs to test the branch from a developer, uh, it will be put automatically inside of the branch. Uh, and it will pull that code. Uh, So this is a bit of an overview on how the thing is working. Um, so the developer goes first to the um, to Jenkins, launches the container. Uh, Jenkins calls the, the bash script, which is kind of a wrapper script. Uh, and that wrapper script will call echo. Echo will figure out, hey, we, where can I launch a container? Uh, which of the servers has the least containers running? Where can I launch it? It will launch it and it will say, OK, I launch a container on this uh, LXC server. The next step uh, is that because the uh, LXC still is kind of a local, um, we need to connect to that, to that LXC instance. We run our provisioning scripts inside of the, of the container. So as, uh, as I've shown before, the puppet apply to do all those changes. After that is done, and hopefully it's success, uh, it will add all of, all of our uh, DNS stuff into PowerDNS. Um, was it worth it? Yes, definitely. We fixed, uh, we fixed all the issues that we had for our development environment. Uh, so the developers now have root. Uh, they can uh, play around with, uh, with whatever software they want. Uh, hopefully they will not uh, try to stay with Spectre or Meltdown. Um, um, yeah, so we can also, we now have a better way to isolate and constrain resources if needed, so uh, if they start to misbehave, uh, they start to, 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 to do some weird things with their application, we can easily uh, burst down the, the network usage or the CPU usage, things that we could not do before with the single environment. Um, we have now more, more of a dynamic environment for testing as well, so they don't need the, 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 to schedule the resources or, uh, or the servers or whatever. And so they can just launch containers and delete containers uh, as they want. Uh, yeah, the development containers are directly accessible on the network. This means that the container will boot up, it will receive an IP address, and uh, they can connect to it and they can run whatever services that they want to connect directly from their laptop. Um, and one very good use case for this that we are already using right now is that we run the unit tests um, so when there is a merge from uh, one of the, the, the one of the branches, one of the development branches into our master branch, uh, every time that happens, we just uh, launch a container. We uh, run all of our unit tests inside of that container because that container is great for that because it has all the application necessary. So we can run uh, all the unit tests inside of that single container and. Um, yeah, and it's being done automatically. So, container is launched, unit tests, deleted, bam, it's done. So, now I want to show a bit of a demo. Just uh, the, um, I'm going to demo the echo part. So, I'm just going to show uh, three uh, LXD servers. So, they are uh, virtual machines running on my laptop. And I'm going to show the, the, the Python script, basically. Okay, so there's 
three um, repo machines running, LXC01, LXC02, and LXC03. And um, these are just uh, regular Ubuntu CC04 running uh, LXC on it. So now on the cluster, there are uh, three containers running. There's C1, there's C3, and there is C2. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to create a container. Let's call it uh, Fosden, based on Ubuntu. <coughs> so now it is, so what the script is right now. Queries all of the, the tree servers, it figure out that the LXVO3 is the one that has the least containers running, or it gave just a random one, because I guess if we have three containers, it will just give a random one out of it. So now it's probably pulling the latest image, might take a bit, hopefully <coughs> it will not take much time. Yeah, so the container is now starting, it is started, and it is on LXC03. Uh, so I can now go to LXC03. Uh, so now we see that the Fossil 2018 container is running there, it has IP address, IPv6, all the, all the fancy stuff running on it. Uh, can also show some information about it. So this just returns the LXD host uh, where the container is running in case you need to connect to the LXD and uh, to the container and do things locally. Uh, this is our custom facts that we add to the containers. Uh, so you see the, the container type usually is uh, development, testing, or uh, production. Um, created by the person who created the container, created that uh, is the created date, uh, the host name, IP, and brand. Uh, currently everything is bogus because uh, the Jenkins, we are not running this through Jenkins, and I'm not running this through the through the bash provisioning, provisioning script. Yeah. Uh, so it's showing just the bogus data because th there's nothing currently there. And yes, well, it started from the beginning. And that's it. Any questions? No, we are not using that. Oh, sorry. Um, so the question is if we are running live migration for developers. Uh, no, because currently there is no need for that. Uh, if a container, if a host goes down, we, we can just recreate the container and it, it, it will have everything that it needs in order to run the application. Any other question? Yeah. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, no, we have not considered. So, so the question is uh, if we have considered using other technologies than take the Jenkins or LAC. Uh, no, because this is uh, what we were already uh, running. Um, so it, it worked for us. And we are quite happy with it. So we have not considered anything else for the time being. Any other questions? Yes. Are you using Jenkins to delete the containers? Jenkins to? Delete the containers. So the question is, if we are using Jenkins to delete the containers, yes, we have a job to delete the containers via Jenkins. So uh, that's a very good question. I should have put as well on the slides. We have um, a job or uh, a website that shows uh, currently the containers running inside of our infrastructure. And uh, so the container name, boss name, uh, the developer, like uh, I've shown there. And uh, then they can just click the button, delete, and then the container will be deleted. And this is our? Excuse me, sorry. Uh, it's, uh, yeah.
Yeah, it's our own plugin to Jenkins. Yeah, it's just it's just basically is calling a, a shell script uh, with a few parameters, and the shell script will take care of deleting the the, the, the container and uh, deleting the NS names and all that stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.